got my cheese nips and we are ready to go. Nabisco is not a sponsor of this video, but I do love cheese nips. So what this video is going to do is refine the $800 ITX PC build that we built a few weeks ago. It's in one of these cards. I don't one of these sides. I don't know which side it's on, uh, but check out that video if you haven't already. 800 bucks. We built a very solid uh, 1080p and even light 1440p ITX gaming PC. This video is going to seek to refine that a bit, but negatively because we only have $600 in our budget this time. I'm not going to build this PC because I've already built a better version of it, but I can say with certainty that this game, this computer will be able to run uh, games in 1080p no problem, even in high settings thanks to the uh, components we've selected. So I've used PC Part Picker here, and that's because it's very easy to see the price breakdowns, each of the parts, and where you can buy them for the cheapest, and I also have every part that I talk about in this video linked in this video's description. Uh, most of those are Amazon affiliate links or just Newegg if they're Amazon links. They are tied to my associate account, so if you buy something via that link, it doesn't even have to be the part in particular. I do get a small kickback for that. I don't make any secret of it. Uh, so if you guys are interested in purchasing anything on Amazon, using any of those links would definitely uh, send me a small little kickback. It adds it up. It just keeps things going for me. I do appreciate all of those contributions, even if it's not you're not directly giving me money, but it helps me out. Uh, so first up, I want to talk about the processor, the i5-6400 here. I recommend at least a true quad-core experience. I can't recommend AMD at this point. Their platform's just too old. Their single-core performance is out the window. And until Zen gets here, I'm sticking with Intel. Sorry, that's how it's going to be. Single-core performance is just just it just it's dominated by intel at this point modern games do demand four physical cores and that's exactly what i've given you here with the i5 6400 relatively low clock speed but you're you're still gonna have four physical cores much better than an i3 even overclocked if you decide to do the base clock overclocking method with the i3 6100 so i5 it is and then we're gonna need an itx motherboard this is an itx pc of course we're following suit with a node 202 build uh, we have an MSI H110i Pro. You can find this on Newegg. I do have the, the mail-in rebate included, but about 70 bucks. That's a pretty good price for an ITX uh, motherboard. If you have Amazon, well, they're out of stock currently, but Amazon, once they do get those in stock, we'll have it up for around the same price. And RAM. I've got with a single 8 gigabyte stick of Corsair Vengeance LPX. This is about, well, around 40 bucks on Amazon. I only went with one 8 gigabyte DIMM because if you do want to upgrade to 16 gigabytes later on, you do have that option versus if you went with two 4 gigabyte DIMMs, you're going to have to just ditch both of them if you want to upgrade to 16 gigabytes. So you do have that option later on. A few games do take advantage of 16 gigabytes now, but for the most part, 8 will be fine. You won't be running a dual channel, but that's not going to change much either. I have already proven that and tested that. A Data Premier SP 550 120 gigabyte solid state drive. I recommend a solid state drive. It's going to change the just the entire experience uh, with your PC. Everything's going to load so much snappier. You're going to have your boot times are going to be literally in the seconds. Like you're not even going to exceed probably 10 seconds with your boot times as long as you install your operating system on your solid state drive. You can pick it up right now on Amazon for 43 bucks. Usually it's around 38, 39. So uh, that might fluctuate a bit but that's still a pretty solid price. You can replace this with a PNY, an OCZ, Tryon from uh, Toshiba, any of those brands I do recommend. So you can be flexible with this list, of course. Uh, I just do like A data and their reliability and their read and write speeds for the price. Next up, we're gonna need more general storage for games. We have a one terabyte Western Digital Caviar Blue hard drive, 50 bucks. The hard drive prices really don't change. So uh, we're, we're gonna stick with that. That's a solid hard disk drive there. I have used one in the past. I'm not going to recommend anything that I haven't specifically used or had hands-on experience with. So, uh, except for, well, except for this, the GTX 1050 Ti. I haven't gotten my hands on the 1050 Ti. Nvidia did send one, but I will say this game will handle this graphics card. Will handle 1080p, no problem, especially with an i5 behind it. In fact, this may end up being our bottleneck uh, in a few scenarios, maybe maybe more than that. So this would be something you should probably consider upgrading later on if you expect to move up to maybe 1440p gaming. The i5 will handle 1440p, but you'll need a beefier graphics card. This is kind of a run-of-the-mill intro card, so 1050 Ti I would equate to like a 960 from Maxwell's generation. 960 will still play 1080p no problem at around 60 FPS with high settings, and you have an i5 to back that up, so you're gonna be uh, sitting very well. Then we have a Cooler Master Elite 110. This is a cube case. I'm not a fan of cube cases, but it, at least they tried to make this one kind of look like a 
That didn't really that didn't really blow up the image very much. Uh, at least they kind of try to make it look like a subwoofer kind of. It just it'll blend in with your furniture a bit more than some kind of like white ostentatious curved box or whatever. Uh, and this one's really cheap, so if you want to get the ten dollar promo, uh, that mail-in rebate there is going to bring this price down to thirty bucks. Even for forty dollars, it's a great case. And uh, I have played with this one a few times actually at a few micro centers I've been to. Lastly, we're going to need a power supply. The ITX case does support full ATX power supplies. We have an EVJ 500 watt 80 plus bronze. I've, or not, excuse me, not 80 plus bronze. It's just 80 plus. So you're not going to notice much of a difference. Uh, but I have used this one uh, a few times in some budget builds. Very quiet power supply. If you're worried about that, it is very quiet, even under full load, and it'll power everything very well. You actually have a, a bit of breathing room. The 1050 Ti is not going to pull very much from, from the wall. And uh, the i5 is also a very low power chip, so 500 watts is actually more than you would need. I'd say you can get away with a 430 watt, but if you do plan on upgrading your graphics card later on, you will have that breathing room. I recommend it. 36 bucks from Amazon. Boom, you're good to go. So that's what I have so far, folks. For 600 bucks, well, yeah, 600 bucks. The mail-in rebates do bring it a, a tad bit below $600. So if you don't consider those 610, 620 dollars, uh, that's still within our area of breathing room for $600. Now one thing that I didn't include that I'm sure a few of you are going to be upset about is a CPU cooler, a, a custom CPU cooler or third-party cooler. Uh, I didn't include one because I didn't have the room for it in the budget. There are compromises you could make to include one. Uh, the Cryrig C7 is my recommendation. I have uh, tested this and it's a, it's a great cooler for the price. So if you're looking for some kind of ITX cooler, the C7 is one that I would choose, but it is 30 bucks. So you're going to have to shave off some, I don't know, you're going to have to shave off the money somewhere else. I don't recommend cutting into your graphics card any more than we already have. You might could just ditch the one terabyte and replace this with a 240. You'll have less storage, but you'll only be paying about 60 bucks versus around 90. So uh, then you'd have some room for a CPU cooler there and you'd keep your price at around the same $600 range. So that's the one thing that uh, you could change. I wouldn't change anything else to be honest. You could change the form factor. That might you know, affect your price a bit. But if you want to stay within the ITX form factor, this is the way that I would go just based off of my experience with building PCs. I've built about 20 of these PCs this year alone. So, you know, this is my first rodeo, but uh, if I had 600 bucks and I was supposed to build an ITX PC, this is, this is almost exactly what I would build, if not the build. So uh, if you have any questions, concerns, leave those in the comments below. This has just been a quick little, you know, what would I do with X amount of money? I feel like I'm experienced enough in PC building now and I've had my hands on enough parts to know what's good and what's not. So uh, you may have different experiences with these parts, but all in all, I will say you'll have a solid 1080p gaming PC and HT PC uh, for about 600 bucks. Very versatile and you actually, you can actually, you know, carry the thing. It's not that large either. That's my PC build, 600 bucks. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below and uh, share it with your friends if they're interested in building something similar to this. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for uh, checking out the PC part picker list with me. Links to the parts are in the video's description. Thanks for learning with us.